Hey everyone, today I'd like to cover an important topic that a lot of people seem to have fear of and even some misconceptions about, and that's leaded solder. So oftentimes when people think of soldering, they immediately conjure up thoughts of dangerous fumes, searing irons, and lead exposure. And while these are accurate descriptions of the soldering process, there's really nothing to fear when handled properly. In fact, it's very similar to working in a kitchen. Yes, a hot stove will burn you if you're not careful, but always use your oven mitts and there's nothing to worry about. You must be careful to avoid touching the hot iron in any heated surfaces. You could wear heat resistant gloves, but this isn't very common because it affects your dexterity, making it more difficult to solder. Instead, you can use hand tools like pliers and just stay cognizant of where the heat is. If you're unsure if something is safe to touch, a handheld infrared thermometer works great. It usually doesn't take more than 30 seconds for a component to cool down after being soldered. You'll also find that sometimes molten solder can splatter like grease on a frying pan. Fast movements of the iron, slipping on a component, or an accidental flick of molten solder are all ways this could happen. So wearing eye protection is crucial for your safety along with gloves to help avoid any possible injuries or burns. I'd like to also point out that soldering and electronics work in general should not be taken lightly. You always want to be aware of what's happening and you should never solder when you're tired, sleepy, under the influence, or otherwise impaired. All right, great. But I thought this video was about lead solder. Well, I was just getting to that. When using lead solder, think of it like handling raw meat. It's perfectly safe as long as you don't ingest it and be sure to wash your hands and work surface when you're done. I personally like to wear a glove on just the hand I'm using to handle the solder wire. This gives me the dexterity I need with my soldering hand and makes me a little bit safer and makes cleanup a little bit easier. And do your best not to contaminate everything and never eat or drink where you work and you'll be safe. It's really that easy. Oh, and don't leave the soldering iron on when you leave the house. That can cause a fire or at the very least wear down your iron and tip. So what about the fumes? That's what I'm most worried about. Well, the good news is that soldering fumes do not contain lead. So what are these fumes composed of if not lead? Well, inside of your solder wire, there is a core running throughout, and this contains a chemical called flux. This is what allows the solder to actually adhere to the workpiece and make a strong mechanical connection. When heated on your iron tip, the flux starts to smoke, and that's the fumes you're seeing. Rosin core flux is the most organic type and actually doesn't smell too bad. But make no mistake, you really don't want to be breathing in these fumes, whether or not you like the scent. It is important to solder in a well-ventilated area, and we recommend using a fume extractor to direct fumes away from your face. When you're looking over your workpiece and you breathe in, the fumes will naturally run directly into your nostrils. The fume extractor solves this problem by creating a stronger suction to pull them away in the opposite direction. This way, the exposure is minimized and it makes for a much safer soldering environment. So why does solder use lead anyway? The reason that soldering is so synonymous with lead is because it has been used in the formulation of solder since the beginning of time. When searching for the best solution, chemists discovered that the alloy of tin mixed with lead resulted in a much lower melting temp than the metals alone. In other words, tin melts at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius and lead melts at 621 degrees Fahrenheit or 327 degrees Celsius. But when they are combined into an alloy of 63% tin and 37% lead, the melting point drops dramatically down to 361 degrees Fahrenheit or 183 degrees Celsius, which is a temperature low enough for a soldering iron to handle where higher temperatures would require a torch. So now you may be asking if lead solder is so functionally superior and not really a health risk under the ideal conditions, why do we bother to develop lead-free alloys? Well, as we have come to realize, there are definite dangers in ingesting lead, whether it's lead paint, leaded gasoline, or leaded solder. 
The main concern in pioneering these alloys, though, was not what happens while you're using it, but what happens after. We were causing a lot of environmental damage by allowing our landfills to be contaminated with lead-filled products. If you think about how quickly new electronic devices are being released today, you can begin to imagine how many old devices are being thrown away or recycled. It's staggering compared to decades past when devices were made to be easily serviceable and last forever. So with all of this equipment contaminating our landfills, it only made sense to seek alternative alloys. And that brings us to the 1990s where the first lead-free alloys were developed by a man named Ivor Anderson. And following his efforts came the lead-free initiatives we know today, such as ROHS, which seeks to limit environmental exposure of lead. When you see devices listed as ROHS compliant, this means they were produced with lead-free alloys. Regions such as the European Union, China, and California have adopted these initiatives, and the majority of consumer electronic devices produced today are now constructed with lead-free solders, especially those made for mass consumption. So now we have alternatives to lead solder that don't pose any sort of risk. So why do people still use leaded solder at all? Well, there are four valid reasons I can think of to still use leaded solder. The first being the melting temp. As mentioned earlier, leaded solder has the advantage of a lower melting point than lead-free alloys. The same job with lead-free would require much more power from your soldering iron, and the higher heat needed poses a greater risk of damaging your workpiece and shortening the life of your tip. Second, the wetting abilities. In addition to this temperature advantage, lead possesses excellent wetting abilities, meaning it is very easy to make a proper cone-shaped solder joint with. It also makes a nice shiny finish when cooled. The third reason is reworking. It is a general rule of thumb to match the solder and flux chemistries to the project. For example, hobbyists and repair shops reworking older equipment pre-1990s should not be using lead-free solder because the devices were likely not built with it originally. And finally, cost effectiveness. Leaded solder alloys are a bit more inexpensive than lead-free alloys. With all that being said, lead-free is still the future of soldering, and these alloys have come a long way since their inception. The most popular lead-free alloys in our experience are SAC-305 and 96-4. For most general electronic soldering, we recommend SAC-305 for a lead-free alloy and 6337 for a leaded. These seem to be the easiest to work with and have excellent wetting abilities. The 6337 alloy is actually eutectic, meaning it melts and solidifies at the same temperature. And this drastically reduces the likelihood of a cold solder joint since the range between solid and liquid is virtually non-existent. And a cold solder joint is when the solder doesn't get hot enough to melt entirely, resulting in a compromised connection. And in the end, the lead versus lead-free decision is up to the user. But remember to avoid mixing alloys and flux chemistries for the best results. And to stay safe, the number one safety precaution to take when soldering is to do so in a well-ventilated space, such as next to an open window where air can circulate. Again, we recommend incorporating a standalone fume extractor or one integrated into your iron to redirect the fumes. Whether it be burning flux, burning plastic, or other chemicals, the fan will pull the fumes away into its carbon filter and get them out of your face. Also, you can cover all your bases by wearing gloves and eye protection. I hope you found this information helpful, and for more soldering tips and content like this, be sure to comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted. It really helps us grow and to be able to make more content like this. Thank you.